This is actually one of my favorite units because you go into long division of polynomials and those are really fun. I mean, they're like puzzles. Once you figure out the puzzle and you get the right answer, you just, you feel so smart. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about long division of polynomials. And you know what? Remainder theorem is based off of that. So I'm going to leave that for another video just so that we focus on one thing. To do long division of polynomials, you really need to know how to do long division. A lot of people don't remember how to do long division. That's why we have our warm up. Okay, so here's our number. We're going to put it under there. The dividing number goes on the outside. 7 can't go into 2 because it's too big a number. That's why 7 goes in 0 times. But it can go into 22. Okay, so 7 goes into 22. That's why we have this line here to kind of cut off that 22. 3 times. 7 3s are 21. Notice that the 3 is above the second 2 and not the first 2. Okay, so the 21 is going to be subtracted from the 22 and you get a remainder of 1. If there's a number here, you're going to bring it down, and that's the next number that 7 has to go into. So 7 goes into 18 two times. 7 twos is 14, and then we subtract again. Bring down the next number if you have one, and then 7 has to go into that new number. So 7 goes into 42 six times. 7 sixes are 42, and you get a remainder of 0. If you get a remainder of 0, that means that 7 went into this number evenly which means that 7 is uh, one of the factors of this number. If we take a look at the other example, it has a remainder of 10, which means that 15 did not divide 700 evenly. It means that it's not a factor of 700. Okay, so let's take a look at that example a little bit closer. We have some terminology that we need to know. So here is the remainder. You already know that one. The one that's being divided is a dividend. The one that's doing the dividing is called the divisor. And then our answer on the top is called the quotient. We need to know all of these words because it helps us to set up both of our answers. So our answers can be set up in two different ways, through a corresponding statement or a quotient form. So corresponding statement to me is the most logical. The dividend, the 700, is equal to the divisor and the quotient multiplying each other. Then that might get you really close to 700, but then you might need to add the remainder to get to the rest of the way to get to 700. Okay, so then you're going to add your remainder at the very end. This is how the corresponding statement is written. If you want to write your answer in quotient form, well, that is the dividend over the divisor, which is equal to the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Now that's written like this. 700 over 15, because you were taking the 700 divided by the 15 before, it's equal to your quotient, but then you have to add your remainder and there's your divisor underneath it. This is written in fraction form, whereas this one is not. So that's the biggest difference between the two. If we apply this to polynomial division, it's exactly the same. All of the steps are the same. It's just a little bit more complicated. So then this is your polynomial. You're going to divide it by another polynomial, which is your divisor. It's going to equal your quotient plus your remainder over the divisor. This is quotient form. This guy is your corresponding statement. Notice that it's written exactly as it was in the previous slide. Your dividend equals to your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder. That's a little bit difficult. I mean, unless, of course, we see an example, it's going to be kind of hard to understand. Here's an example, then. Let's divide this polynomial, which is your dividend, by your divisor. Okay, now notice, this is an x cubed. You're missing your x squared. You have an x, and then you have something with no x's. Technically, these guys should be going in descending order always. And if you're missing a term, like your x squared, you have to put a placeholder. This guy goes underneath the dividing sign. So notice that I put a placeholder, a 0x squared, in place of the x squared term that should be there. That's very important. So again, all of your exponents should be going downwards for the x's. And you have to have each one, x cubed, an x to squared, an x, and a no x. That's extremely important in terms of long division. Okay, then you're going to put your divisor on the outside. 
and you're going to start to divide. Since this is a binomial, it, just, it can't go into a monomial. It has to go into the entire binomial. That's why your answer is going to go over the second term. Okay, so how do we do this? Ignore the second terms in each of them. Forget the 1, forget the 0, just look at the first terms. How does 2x become a 4x cubed? Well, you have to multiply it by 2x squared. 2 times 2 is going to give you 4. x times x squared gives you x cubed. We want these guys to be the same because when we subtract, they should disappear. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the red term and multiply it by your divisor. That's going to make your 2 into a 4, and then your x into an x cubed. 2x squared times 1 is just 2x squared. So this is formed by taking your red times your entire divisor. Then you're going to subtract. So when we subtract, they disappear. 0 minus 2 gives you a negative 2. These have an x squared beside them, and then we're going to bring the next term down. So this is the next thing that the divisor has to divide. Let's try that again. How does 2x become a negative 2x squared? Forget the 1, forget the 9. Well, you're going to have to multiply it by negative x, because negative x times 2x gives you a negative 2x squared. These guys, when we subtract, will become a 0, which is what we want. Okay, so then we're going to take this guy, multiply the entire divisor to get our answer underneath the yellow highlighted part. Subtract now. These guys subtract, you're going to get a 0. 9 subtract negative x gives you a 10x. Bring down the next one. This is the next thing that you're going to have to divide with the divisor. Okay, now again, we want to make this. So 2x multiply 5 will give you this guy. That means they match. When you subtract, it's going to give you a 0. Take the blue and multiply the entire divisor, and then you get this guy underneath. So 10x minus 10x is going to give you 0. Negative 12 minus a positive 5 gives you negative 17. This is our remainder, and we're finished because there's nothing else we can bring down. If we want to write our answer in two different ways, we can write it in the quotient form, which is up here. Dividend divided by divisor equals to your quotient, see quotient, plus our remainder, negative 17, over our divisor. Or you can write it in corresponding statement. So that is your dividend equal to the quotient, sorry, the divisor times the quotient plus your remainder. Holy cow, that's like, ah, oh, so many words, big words too, with lots of syllables. Anyways, this part right here asking for restrictions is basically saying if you write it in fraction form, you're going to get some sort of a restriction because the denominator can't equal to zero. So x cannot equal to negative one half because it gives you an undefined um, answer. All right, let's try this one more time. This question asks you to do two divisions. I'm only going to show you the answer for one. Um, well, the full answer for one. I'll give you both answers. Okay, so there's the full answer. We're going to take our dividend, divide it slowly by our divisor. So take two terms at a time because we have a binomial. Okay, so x goes into x cubed this many times. Take your red times your entire divisor, get these two. These guys should match so that when you subtract, you get a 0. 4 minus 2 gives you 2, and then this is the x squared column. Bring the next one down. This is going to be the new answer that you need to divide by. Okay, so take this guy, divide it by, or divide it into this. 2 goes into 2x, sorry, x goes into 2x squared. Oh, my tongue is all tied up. Um, 2x times. Okay, so x times 2x gives you the 2x squared. And then what we're going to do is take the 2x times the 2, and we're going to get 4x. Subtract, these guys should disappear, becomes a 0. x minus 4x equals to negative 3x. Bring the next one down. Now your divisor has to go into this x can become negative 3x by multiplying a negative 3. So what you're going to do is take the blue and multiply all of this, and you're going to get the entire blue statement. When you subtract, you get an answer of 0. That is our remainder. So that means that this guy goes into this dividend perfectly. 
That means that it's a factor. Okay, now if I write it in quotient form, the dividend divided by the divisor equals to the quotient plus the remainder of zero. Like I said, I'm just going to give you the answer for the last one. I'm not really going to give you the full solution. It takes a little bit of time and, you know, you can always check it out yourself. The very last part of this video is this guy right here. Actually, you know what? Why don't I scroll up a little bit more um, because it has to do with A. Here is our polynomial, these guys right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in a negative 2, the opposite of this number, and I'm going to sub in a 3, which is the opposite of this number, and see what happens. So when I take a negative 2 and I sub it into all of the x's, I get a 0. Huh, well, that's a little bit interesting. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and then when I go, okay, I'm going to sub in a positive 3 into the x's in our polynomial. So here we go. And I get this answer, a 60. Well, hmm, also very interesting. All right, well, that's going to tell you a little bit about the next video on remainder theorem. But until now, just going to leave you with that.